manufacturers in the country. And my first guest today, Brian Cargin, is an avid collector. Welcome to you, Brian. Thank you very much. Now, is this your entire collection that we see? No, it's not. I've got some more at home. Just a bit more. Just a few pieces, yes. <laughs> I guess this is a tiny fraction. Now, we're concentrating on the glass of which era? 20s and 30s. What was the sort of glass that Whitefriars produced, James Powell produced, up until that point? Well, very fine, elegant glass of very high quality and very good design. Here's an example of some of it here. What, these two pieces? Yes, they're yes. from about the 1880s. Yes. I mean, there's almost something of the arts and craft movement about those pieces to me. Very much so. There isn't very much uh, arts and craft glass, but I think you could describe this as very much that way. Was William Morris a fan, do you think? I think he was. I know he sold some of their glass in his shop. Yes. So what happened then later on during the 20s and 30s where suddenly you've got some quite revolutionary designs taking place, haven't you? You have. They, um, under the Harry Powell influence, they kept this very thin, elegant line. Yes. And he died in about 1922, I think, and then the style changed quite dramatically then. Tell us about this beautiful glass here. That's one of his designs from about 1900. I mean, it looks so ahead of its time. But one thing I do notice is that you've got this little rim at the bottom here around the neck of this glass, and you see it on some of the other pieces. W was that a signature, if you like? They like using that. They called it riggery, and it, I think it's uh, something left over from the Roman times. Let's move forward, because here we've got some pieces from very different eras, haven't we? Tell me about the markings, how you can spot Whitefriars, James Powell glass. It's very seldom marked. They sometimes had paper labels on them, but uh, the only ones that are marked are the coronation goblets or commemorative pieces. Can you just lift that so we can see the marking underneath? If you just point that. And it actually does say white fries. On. And so how, how can you tell if you've lost the paper label and there, there is no marking underneath the, the piece? Um, the quality and um, the color is very significant. So I have difficulty with the colours because I'm colour blind. And yet you love this work, so how do you tell? What are the clues for you? Let's, let's take these pieces for example here. How can you tell what something actually looks like? Um, well, the quality of the glass, the, uh, the, the swirliness, the lack of too many bubbles, and uh, the ring, if you um, give it a slight uh, tap. It Demonstrate has a very nice that ring. to us. Is this a good piece to try that out on, do you um, think? It's probably quite good, yes. yes Tell me how it works. So clear, isn't it? Don't let it finish, though. I'm a bit superstitious about that. Yeah. <laughs> what are the different names to the, to the, to the markings? This is a streaky. That's a streak as well, from the 1920s or 30s. And this is a streaky they did in the 1970s for a short period under Geoffrey Baxter. Quite, quite late on. Now, there are very different thicknesses to the glass. The designs, even though they have names, each piece, I would imagine, would turn out differently, wouldn't it? All the streaky ones will turn out uh, completely differently, yes, because yes. they just gather the colours up and then they're not really sure how it's going to end up. But that's what's so attractive about it, isn't it, that you never quite know what you're going to get. And, I mean, here we have pieces that almost look like ceramic. There's certainly some enamel feeling there. Am I right? Yes, they've got enamel mixed in with the glass when they, when they blow it. Yes, and, it, and it's, it's got a sort of opalescence about it too, and an opaque quality. It's like, yes, it's, it's very opaque. This is called cloudy glass. The streak is not opaque at all, but the uh, cloudy glass is. Yes, when did they stop producing glass? 1980. What's your favourite piece? Have you brought a favourite here? Uh, there's so many, really. I, I like the uh, early elegant ones of uh, Harry Powell, yes. I think. Yes, yes. Well, thank you very much for showing us the power glass of the 20s and 30s. Okay, you're thank welcome. Thank you very much, Brian. Now, remember, if you have a collection you'd like us to know about, then get in touch at Collector's Lot, PO Box 17, Plimpton, Devon, PL75YG.